Abu Dhabi's IHC investing $2 billion in India's Adani Group, and India sharply hikes inflation and cuts growth projections. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramya Faraj. Abu Dhabi-based international holding companies investing $2 billion in three green-focused companies in the Adani Group portfolio. IHC signed the deal with the Indian conglomerate as primary capital in Adani Green Energy, Adani Transmission and Adani Enterprises. They're all listed on Indian bourses. Officials say the transaction marks the start of a wider relationship between Adani Group and IHC and will attract further investment from the UAE into India. India's central bank has cut growth forecasts and sharply hiked its inflation projections. The central bank projects the economy will expand 7.2 percent for the 2022-2023 financial year, compared with a previous estimate of 7.8 percent. It also saw inflation at 5.7 percent, well up from the 4.5 percent predicted two months ago. India bounced back from the pandemic with world-beating growth, but it's now grappling with rising costs. Oil is heading for another weekly retreat on announcements of major stockpile releases, as well as a drop in demand from China and a hawkish turn from the U.S. Federal Reserve. West Texas traded below $96 a barrel, with prices more than 3 percent lower this week. It's now lost most of the gains it's seen since Russia invaded Ukraine in February. While many Western companies boycott Russian oil, China and India continue to buy, with cargoes of Russian Sokol crude sold out for next month. Egypt's net foreign reserves declined by roughly $4 billion in March. International investors have fled the Egyptian treasuries due to the conflict in Ukraine, putting pressure on the currency. Foreign reserves were at $37.08 billion at the end of March, down from $40.99 billion at the end of February. They'd been just above $40 billion since November 2020. The Ukraine war prompted Egypt's central bank to temporarily deploy its excess foreign currency reserves to calm markets. Lebanon has reached a preliminary deal with the IMF for a $3 billion loan to help it overcome its financial crisis, but the agreement won't be approved until authorities implement a series of reforms, including floating its exchange rate. If approved, the four-year loan program will help restore Lebanon's credibility among international investors and unlock further foreign aid. Sri Lankan leaders from garments, tea and other industries say the country's goods and services exports could plunge 20 to 30 percent this year due to high freight charges and power cuts potentially worsening an economic crisis. Various industry associations are urging the government to quickly seek financial help from the IMF. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Our biggest loser today is Bernard Arnault and family, down $3.2 billion with net wealth of $167.7 billion. Our second biggest loser today is EV battery module Robin Zhang, down $1.2 billion with net wealth of $44.7 billion. And our third place loser is Tencent boss Mahua Tang, down $1.2 billion with net wealth of $39.1 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. And staying with billionaires, Elon Musk marked the official start of production at Tesla's new Giga Texas plant, welcoming throngs of EV lovers for a huge party dubbed a Cyber Rodeo. At the event, Musk inaugurated the manufacturing plant, which is the size of 100 soccer fields. Musk says the plant will produce at least 500,000 vehicles annually by next year. The Texas plant opens as the outlook for Musk's company has never been stronger as climate change worries and rising oil prices boost demand for EVs. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.